I am so excited. I'm excited too. So excited to see you and mm -hmm. so excited to talk to you about this topic. Today we're going to talk about why it's super important to hire a professional wedding planner when planning your South Asian wedding. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your company? Okay. Awesome. Well, hello everyone. My name is Denise and I am the owner, designer, and logistics queen of D Royal Engagements. I have been planning events for 20 years. I started off in politics and moved yeah. over to weddings. Um, and I've been doing Indian weddings, South Asian weddings, cultural fusion weddings for 10 years. We were planning this topic in particular. We wanted to highlight three important things as to why it's super important to hire a professional wedding planner. And that was the vendor referral, mm -hmm. the saving money, and time management. Let's start with, um, the vendor referral and why that's super important and what you bring to the table. Great question. Okay, vendor referrals. Here's what I'll say. I know, so good, right? So good. Um, I would say the most important thing when you do a big project, like a wedding, taking on this you know, huge thing, is putting together the best team for you. So I think it's super important that you make sure that your couple, um, you as a couple, look for vendors that not only match your budget, that's not the most important thing because there's so many resources, especially in the Bay Area, of different yep. wedding professionals to choose from, but you wanna make sure they get you. So many advantages with working with vendors that I have a great relationship. I agree. Yeah, I have a very tight, uh, I mean, it's epic, my um, vendor preferred vendor list that I share with only my clients. Um, and what I do, it's like I'm a matchmaker, like millionaire matchmaker, mm -hmm. but like for wedding professionals mm -hmm. and couples, yeah. right? So that vendor referral, like that's literally my job. Yeah. Once that's set, the first thing we do is lock all your vendors in. Now we've got our team, we can take a break, chill, fill the details in later. Yeah, having those vendor referrals that will, you know, sometimes give you a discount just because it just makes it so much easier. So then, you know, we'll, we'll, we're gonna dive in into like saving money. So why hiring a wedding professional will save money, other than like, you know, the vendor referrals and the discounts. Time is money with wedding planning. Photographers, they are one of the biggest expenses you're gonna have, and venues. Both of those are gonna have time constraints in their contract. If you go overtime, because your wedding planners don't know how to work with brown people, you're gonna be, <laughs> oh, with the melanin scale, okay. You're gonna be like, paying $500 extra, $1,000 extra. Why would you want to do that? Why not spend that $500,000, $4,000, $5,000 on a wedding planner and save $5,000 or save $10,000 mm -hmm. on top of, it's an investment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So get someone who's educated, who's trained, who's experienced, you see Indian weddings on their website, it's gonna save you money. Yeah. And are you like me where you pass your discounts on to your clients? I do. I do what I can with my relationships with the vendors and, 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 and I let the client know ahead of time what I'm able to do. Right. and how my business model That's works. Yeah, yeah. because sometimes I have to pay to pick up things, and if I give them a discount, I've got to charge them more later. So I just want to be the best for the client. Um, you know, moving on to, I think, what's super important and sometimes a little difficult when it comes to planning um, a South Asian wedding is time, and <laughs> how it's so different here, and tell me a little bit about your experience with time and how yeah. you do that. Okay, so I'm gonna trademark this. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started doing wedding planning, it was always hard to talk about different cultures and you don't want to be rude or sound like discriminatory. Yeah. So I came up with something that I talked to my couples about that helps them understand how I can support them. And I call it the melanin scale. So it's kind of like the more melanin you have, the darker you are, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So people of different cultures come in all different shades. <laughs> and the best thing about living in California, which I love, is fusion weddings, different cultures coming together. So when I sit down with a couple, Maybe he's South Asian, maybe he's, I mean, sorry, South Indian, and maybe he's, she's Danish, like a couple like the wedding I did in Tahoe. So I said, okay, let's talk about the melanin scale. Way far on this end of the melanin scale would be someone who's Nigerian, so sorry. Mm -hmm. Or, you gotta just go with me here. <laughs> Not all Nigerians are this far on the scale. Someone over here might be Danish, yeah. or Scandinavian, or Russian, whatever, right? The further you go down the melanin scale, Persian, South Asian, Filipino, like, you mm -hmm. know, the, um, my people, my community, yeah. the further you go down, the things you gotta think about, and chances are you're gonna have some time issues. Yes. yes. People call it different, and you know, there's brown people time, yeah. there's all kinds of things. <laughs> Filipino <laughs> time, Mexican uh, time. I'm and so, <laughs> when I start off the conversation like that, I say, we gotta do things to compensate for that. Yeah. 
So with my weddings, I'm in charge of the timeline. I build a cushion. Other big thing about time and South Asian weddings in particular is hair and makeup. Yeah. Hair and makeup, I would say, is the most important vendor. Today I'm wearing eyelashes by Marcel. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Marcel. And <laughs> lipstick by Megan um, from Blinking Beauté. So if you start off with your hair and makeup behind schedule, everyone's stressed. It ruins the day. The bride or groom, whoever's getting services, like they're not confident and excited and they get overwhelmed. So I feel like if you don't do a good job sourcing out that person and do a trial and figure that out, your wedding's gonna be delayed. Yeah, I always tell my couples that too. The hair and makeup schedule sets the tone for yeah. the day. Whether yeah. you like it or not. Like, yeah. Don't yeah. be loosey goosey. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. The other thing that I would say I highly recommend, especially with South Indian weddings, um, is getting a sorry tire. Sorry, Draper. A professional, a not professional, a Mossy. Yeah. Like, Mossy's aunt. But, like, what I would say is because they can do it quick. And if you have, like, people who have low melanin or they've never worn a sari before, if you have some a Russian, a Russian groom with all his Russian sisters and you've got, <laughs> like, a South Asian bride, they don't know how to do saris. They're stressed out. They want to look good. Sorry, Draper. I use um, perfect sari draping. I adore her. She did my little. Sorry today. Awesome. Um, she can do it quick. I mean, I can't just putting myself in the shoes of like the families that are so used to like planning or wanting to do a wedding the way they do like, you know, in India, in India and coming here and knowing that your venue only gives you like five hours right. or seven hours. <laughs> and you can't, maybe a two hour ceremony and, and, and three sorry um, changes won't, we won't have time for that. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Which again, it goes back to like hire a professional wedding planner that can see. You know everything cultural into that time frame yeah and i don't know everything that's why you have to be you want someone who's open to learning because just like there's so many um dynamics in south mm -hmm. asian weddings all those things and blending those things um you have to be open and listening and then also what does your family do what's the tradition how did your mom drape rosari like mm -hmm. what colors did the, the outfits they wear you know all those things i've just learned along the way to be patient ask questions yeah um share what i know yeah. Awesome. Great. So anything else just to recap the preferred vendor, mm -hmm. the saving money, and the uh, time management? Um, I would just say a couple of things. I think people with budget and saving money I think is a big thing. Um, I would say that you, it's the education process when you start wedding planning. Mm -hmm. You know, you get what you pay for. Like, you can go to Walmart. Amen to that. Wait, say that again. You get what you pay for. <laughs> like... You know, you could go to Walmart and get someone who just started off wedding planning. That's fine. I started off at one time. Yeah. If that's what you want to do, great. You're going to sacrifice some things. You could go to Target, step it up, be in the mid, you know, someone who's got a mid level of experience. Mm -hmm. Or you could go to Burdock, you know, you could go to Nordstrom, even Market. Like, you, you can elevate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I do all kinds of weddings from mid range to luxury weddings, destination weddings. Um, you know, I focus, I specialize in cultural infusion weddings. Yeah. Um, I do 80% Indian weddings a year. You get what you pay for. Once you go with someone with that experience, they know how to save you money, they know how to support you, it's not the learning experience, and you just, when you first start planning, there's so many things you don't know. Yeah. It's back to that doctor. If you were to walk in and be a surgeon for the first day ever, you would know how to do it. And you have to understand, you don't know what things cost, and that's okay. You don't know what questions to ask, and that's okay too. Mm -hmm. What I say is people get really, I don't know, I don't know, but the one thing you do know is you guys are a couple, yeah. and you know each other, you know what you like, and you know what's important to you. So I say focus on those things, prioritize. If food's the most important thing because you're foodies, spend the most money on food. Yeah. If flowers are not that important, don't spend that much money on there. And budgeting that way, um, doing what you love, it's gonna help you. Yeah. Run. And then of course they probably won't know this, which is why they would hire that professional wedding planner to exactly. help them. And I would totally say, whatever you think your budget is, add ten thousand dollars there's no bottom line with wedding planning because it's an emotional spending yeah think about how you spend when you're hungry you're just gonna buy everything in the grocery store exactly maybe you've always wanted Sabia Sachi, which is a high-end you know um, designer for Indian clothes you're 20 10,000 20,000 whatever dollars and you know but you always wanted it that's your emotion it's not practical if you're trying to only spend two thousand mm dollars -hmm. on your linga yeah. So emotional spending is going to cost you $10,000. Just prepare now. <laughs> I 
love it. Thank you so you. much, Denise. Thank you. This was really good, super Thank educational. You. Um, I really want you know you guys to ask questions on our comments. Um, definitely let us know what you think, and if there's anything else you know you want to learn, let us yeah. know as well, right? Totally. Yeah. Please, please, please like this video, subscribe, and also on a daily basis you can find me on Instagram at Book Simply Elegant. And what about you? Yes, I love answering questions. Um, please comment. Yes. Please de slide into my DM. Um, I'm on Instagram as D Denise Lily Engagements. Great. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, guys. Bye, guys.